Now, when it comes to riding it in dust, there surely can't be a better place to show you how to deal with it than here, Nevadas de Chian Bike Park, Chile. Situated five hours south of the capital, Santiago, Nevadas de Chian lies in the Bio Bio region of the Andes, one of the most volcanically active areas in the country. We're here in February, the hottest, driest month of the year, with temperatures pushing above 30 degrees and precipitation a mere 10 millimetres. Sounds like a great place to give you some tips on how to deal with similar conditions this summer. I'm buzzing, Henry. What track are we going to go ride? La Nationale. Very nice. I am looking forward to it. It sounds a bit gnarly. Yeah, had it's dustier than old transit. Ooh, a lot of that Chilean anti-grip knocking around then. Potentially. Oh my days, Henry. Really blum and dusty. Oh, you're killing me, bud. How are you getting on, bud? Nice. It's going to get a little bit worse. OK. Enter in the sand there. Oh. Oh my days! Now we all love to put those party laps in with our mates, but when it's super dusty like this, a real top tip here is either hang back a very long way to let the dust settle a little, or really close. If you're stuck in that middle ground, you're going to be in a whole cloudy world of trouble. This dust is nuts! My eyes are getting a little bit sore. How are you doing, bud? I'm hanging in there. you got to stop skinning. You're killing me. Trying to keep a little bit of distance. And that way, hopefully the dust will clear up a little bit by the time you get through there. I'm having too much fun heckling Henry. <laughs> oh, blimey, it's dusty around here. OK, let's talk about track deterioration. Now, what I mean by that is how the track is affected from such dry and dusty conditions. Now, what's going to happen is the ground is just going to get really loose and fine dirt and break up. This is going to cause a lot of braking bumps to form in the turns and also big ruts which are really difficult to get out of. The key here, be vigilant, look up and keep like an eye on what's upcoming. That way you can prepare for it and hopefully get out of those nasty situations. Let's do it Henry! Dust fast! Oh my god! Oh, oh my days! Oh my god! Henry, you're killing me! Oh! oh. I tasted that one! So let's talk about riding technique and what you might want to change or slightly adapt to make riding that brown powder just that little bit easier. Oh my God! Oh, Henry, I've got, I've got a what are you doing to me, man? Firstly, I try and ride light and smooth. This way you're going to ride nice and light on top of that powder rather than pushing really hard into it, which has caused the wheels to wash out from underneath you and you're going to go down like a sack of spuds in the dirt. Okay, so second... That's three. So second tip here is heavy feet, light hands. Now what I mean by that is putting all your weight through the back end and into your heels and into the pedals is going to keep that back end nice and planted in the turns and also pick that front end up to stop it pushing out and washing away. But I think now it's time to talk a little bit more technical and for this I'm going to need Henry. So low traction is low traction. So the setup demands when riding this sort of stuff isn't a million miles away from riding in the mud. So tyres with a nice long penetrative spike are great because they're going to get through that loose top layer and hopefully anchor you down to something a bit more secure underneath. The same thing can be said of pressures. If it's super grippy and hard pack, you're going to be hitting turns a lot harder than when it's loose and dusty like this. So a lot of riders coming from wetter climates might run the suspension just a little bit softer. And although it's a completely different climate here, it demands something quite similar. If you have your bike used to being able to handle really high load compressions at warp speed, 
when you come to ride maybe some of the slower, looser, techier stuff here, you'll be out of your comfort zone entirely and the bike will really struggle. So maybe soften it up just a tad. This is so soft. So down here, tire choice is critical. It's not totally dissimilar from what a mud tire deserves. The front nearly went. Long spikes, often best. I'm getting a bit of squirrely, dude. Where are you, Henry? Oh my god. I have to drop back or forwards helps. I tell you what, a really important thing here. I'm glad I've got glasses on. Or at least if I didn't, wearing goggles. Man, you gotta wear something in the dust. That's like a tip I cannot stress enough. Okay, the dust seems to have got a little bit less on this lower section. So I think what I'm gonna try and do is sneak in a bit tighter behind Henry and hopefully he doesn't kill me. Yeah, bye. Nice. Yeah. A thoroughly dusty run. I think I've just aged about 30 years there. So then, just to reiterate a few of our riding in the dust points. If you're following your buddies, you're going to want to stay very close or very far away because uh, if you're in the middle there, you're not going to see. And talking of seeing, eye protection. If you've got some uh, glasses or goggles, it's going to help no end seeing where you're going. Also, seeing where you're going, remember be vigilant because the dust hides all sorts of obstacles. And remember, get your equipment up to scratch. Some proper tyres with some good tread on them is going to make a difference. Uh, and really help with uh, sort of you gripping in that dust. Um, and speaking of dust, Henry, you said that uh, wasn't too dusty down there. It wasn't, wasn't dusty for me, I saw fine. Mm -hmm. 